Welcome everybody, welcome back to Homestead Heart. And today I am in this kitchen, y'all. I'm still working in canning and I decided to come and just share this quick little conversation with all of you. Now I just took out of the canner my last batch <laughs> of uh, jalapeno peppers. Now I did a double batch of diced for me this time around, right? because last year I only did six diced for me and the remainder I did sliced for Mr. H. Well, lo and behold, he decided that he loved my diced as much as he do his sliced. <laughs> so this time I just went ahead and did 12 half pints and this should be enough to kind of get us through, hopefully, until peppers start coming in, God willing, next uh, season, okay? But anyway, and then the fall garden, y'all, we have been busy working on like pulling the last of everything out because our crops, like many of yours, are still producing heavily, right? But we just got to go on and take them out and I've kind of let them go as long as I can. But getting ready for the fall garden because we are going to be getting our fall garden planted soon. And I have been waiting because it's been so hot and I didn't want to get you know, things down like turnips and rutabagas and peas and carrots and all of that just to have the heat to destroy them because it's been so hot here. Even my onions have taken a hit. I still got a few trays of onions, but some of them are just burnt, even though they were in the shade. It's been just hot, y'all. So the garden, we're going to be planting the garden out here this week. I think today is the last day for rain. So hopefully after the rain passes, we'll be able to go out and get started with our fall garden planting. And I'm excited about that, okay? But anyway, y'all, this video today is about how it all started for me when it comes to pressure canning, okay? Now, you all, I was watching Lead Farmer 73's video today and I really appreciate like all of the shout outs that he just gave us throughout the video. It was very, very nice, very kind. And then, you know, I'm just working, but all of the beautiful comments that so many of you were leaving um, in the chat, I was just really, really, really just humbled by all of it, you know? And it got me to thinking because throughout his whole video, he kept saying, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a teacher. Right. And I know he's not going to want me to say this, <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> bro, you a teacher <laughs> straight up <laughs> because all of us, thousands of us are learning, learning like from lead and lady lead. We are learning so much from them. You know, even when it comes to just basic survival, you know, everything that they've been showing lately on their videos with the tent practices and all of that, how to start a fire with a water bottle. And I mean, these are things that just kind of blew my mind. I was like, wow, <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> but in any case, we are all learning. And I think that he has really done an excellent job of you know getting it into our brains like hey you can do this right and so that kind of made me think about this topic because you know how did this all start for me because i know a lot of people just think you know hey this is this is too much to be getting into or too much to be doing but you all i'm gonna tell you something i started canning over 20 years ago Okay, it's been a long time. I started over 20 years ago canning. I didn't have any experience. I didn't have anybody to teach me. I had no idea what I was doing. I really didn't. You know, there was that beautiful lady that I told y'all about every now and then. She lived like two hours, two and a half hours away from us. And so every now and then when I would get a chance to talk to her, she just was canning all kind of stuff, beans and meat and bread and cheese and all kind of stuff she was canning. And I was like, I didn't know you could do that, you know? And so I really was just like, 
feeling a little overwhelmed hearing her talk about the things that she was able to can. But at the same time, I really wanted to learn how to do it for myself. And so what I did was I went to the downtown library and I had the lady there. She helped me find all books on canning. I had a big old stack. <laughs> And you know, at the library, you can only check out so many books at a time, right? But I mean, I had a stack of books that I just wanted to take them home and read them and learn how to can. And you know, she was like, well, you can't take all of them. <laughs> but you could, so I left with like half that stack, you know. But in any case, some of the books were very old from the uh, 50s and, and whatnot, canning books. But I was reading them. And some of them were not very helpful because they weren't detailed, giving me kind of the step-by-step -step guide. You know, step one, prepare your jars, prepare your equipment, make sure your equipment is in good repair. You know, um, it didn't have those like beginning steps for somebody that was just learning to start pressure canning or canning anything for that matter, right? So for me, you know, I kind of kept it quiet. I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. I didn't tell anybody that I was learning to teach myself how to can. I bought a canner. Yeah, I had saved up my money. I bought a canner. They were not that expensive then, but hey, money then was money, and it was hard to come by then, right? And even though the jars were like, what, $3.99, $4.99? for a case of jars, depending on the sizes. So the jars weren't expensive then, but there were five little ones <laughs> that had to be taken care of, right? And so to just constantly buy jars was just not something that could be done at that time. I was able to get them when I could get them, right? But I was teaching myself basically how to can, reading these books, and, you know, I remember buying the bags of beans and, and whatnot. And, you know, you just go buy stuff that you're going to can. So I had beans and I had chicken legs and I had just stuff <laughs> that I'm going to can. I don't know in what order, but I'm going to can it, you know. And my little Presto pressure canner at the time, it didn't have a dial gauge. It just had the weighted gauge, you know that does all the jiggling and stuff. But see, the bottom line for me was that I wasn't terrified. There was some trepidation, but I wasn't terrified. And my end goal was that I'm gonna do this, you know? And I just remember not talking to anybody about it. And the reason for that was because not, you know, not that somebody would be mean, but sometimes, you know, if somebody can't do something, they would project that onto you and it could be discouraging, right? By telling you that, you know what, you 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 got to be careful because, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you, you know, you you might mess things up. And if you do, and, and then this could happen. See, I didn't need any of that energy. Remember, we always talk about you have to, like, protect what goes into your ears. So in any case, I never told anybody. And I remember I started canning beans or chicken i don't remember like which one came first but the thing that stood out to me the most was not knowing what to listen for like you know the instructions in the canner said that it was going to give a rocking motion right and so i let it rock that fire was on high and it stayed on high the entire 90 minutes that i was canning <laughs> I'll never forget when I learned that you didn't do that right. <laughs> I remember learning like, oh, that's, oh, okay. <laughs> but you all, it was a beautiful, beautiful time for me because I was, um, I was going into like a, a whole different experience for myself. I would keep my canner like in the back of my cabinet so if anybody came over or anything like that, would nobody see it? So I would have it like on at the bottom, uh, in the bottom cabinet, but just way to the back with other stuff in front because I didn't want to talk about it. You know, I didn't want to talk about canning. 
uh, my jars. I remember I kept my jars in my uh, cabinet at the very top, but all the way to the back where and i had other stuff in front of them so you couldn't see the jars that i had canned you know and so i just remember just keeping it under wraps until i got really comfortable and that beautiful lady that i was telling you about who was telling me you can do it like she was the only person that i started to communicate with because i kept saying i want to learn and she would encourage me to find somebody close around me that could really walk me through but there was no one there to do that right so she just said you can do it just keep reading and keep practicing you might make a few mistakes but you can do it and we weren't making phone calls like that because long distance was expensive okay but every now and then when i would get a chance to see, and then if you had a cell phone you know the minutes <laughs> That's when you, you, you know, you had to watch your minutes, right? So, <laughs> so if I ever needed to just like ask her a question or anything, she would be there. But it was kind of hard to really explain to somebody new on the phone. We didn't have a YouTube then, so there wasn't a video I could watch, you know. It was all the books. And if you didn't have anybody standing there to kind of guide you through, you literally were on your own. And that's where I found myself, on my own. But that was okay. I was motivated enough to do it. And the first few, what, months or so, you know, I made some mistakes, or like a lot of them, but I just kept going. I just kept going. And then in six months, I felt like, I got it, you know, I got this, I can do this, you know. And so in six months or so, I felt really, really confident that I knew what I was doing, right? But then came water bath canning. And for some reason, I don't know why to this very day, that's where my greatest anxiety was. <laughs> With water bath canning. So when I saw this same beautiful lady again, and I talked to her about it, and I told her, you know, and she said, oh, that's the easiest thing you can do. That's the easy. You can even go and buy some juice. Just go buy some juice and use that and follow your recipe. Just buy the juice. You don't even have to, you know, peel all of the berries and all of that. Just buy the juice, you know. And so I did. I did. And I made my first batch of jelly. It wasn't like super jelly, you know, jelly jelly. It was more kind of like a little runny, but it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> it tasted real good and my children loved it but the thing was to just start just do it just learn read as much as you can and just get it together and if you don't want to tell anybody don't and if you want to tell somebody do you know it was just like when I learned to sew you know I bought a sewing machine had never used one before I bought fabric and patterns. I ain't never sold nothing before, but I wanted to learn. So guess what I did? I taught myself. And before long, I was making beautiful garments for myself and my daughters. Yes, I was. I was sewing our clothes. And that took some practice, but I had to teach myself. With the easy sew pattern, I would take that easy sew pattern and get some of the most beautiful fabric. And that became my beautiful outfits and my daughters too, right? So it was more or less like um, accepting the fact that since I didn't have anybody to teach me, like I said, there was no YouTube, accepting the fact that, hey, you are gonna make a mistake, you're gonna make several, you might mess a lot of stuff up, but that's okay. That's okay. One year from today, you will not be making these same mistakes again, so let's get started with that first year. And that's what I did. So you all, when it comes to canning, if you have any trepidation whatsoever, I understand, but fight through that. Fight through that and don't let that stop you from learning. Now we got videos everywhere. Now you don't have to be on your own now. Now you can watch somebody else do it and you can follow along like y'all did with Led Live today, right? And his other live, y'all was, it was a whole canning party. I'm telling you, follow along with somebody, just step by step. 
take notes as you go of the things that you are uncertain about so you can ask those questions later or Google them. You got Google too? We didn't have no Google. <laughs> it was just whatever book you had. So just put your fears down. If you've never done it before, it's okay. It only has to be your first time one time. And then once you start doing it more and more and more, I promise you, you're going to be like, I cannot believe it took me so long to do this. Why did I have that can of sitting in that closet for a year, two years, three years, because I'm scared to use it? You're going to be like, that, that was ridiculous. <laughs> I promise, right? So you all, put your fears to the side. Okay? Okay? Put the fears to the side. Go ahead and grab your canners and go ahead and start canning. The fall season is right up on us and this is a great time to start canning your apple butters and pear butters and all that. It's, I love canning beans and meats and stuff during the winter months because that pressure canner going for an hour and a half, it helps keep the house warm. <laughs> <laughs> so I love canning foods that take a long time. I love doing that in the in the fall and winter months, y'all, especially the winter months. So that's something to think about too. So go ahead and pull your canner out, get your canning guide, and let's start canning because you can do it. Okay? Yes, you can can. All right. Well, y'all, that's gonna do it for this video. I just wanted to come on and just um really like continue with that encouragement that I saw today. It was just so beautiful. So many people were just so encouraged by what was being said and what was being demonstrated, how he was doing it. And then everybody was having such a great time to let's just keep that energy going, right? Because that is the energy that's needed right now. We got enough negativity out there. <laughs> We got to keep it positive and keep it moving, all right? So let's get those cannons out, y'all, and let's start canning, all right? What did it say? Oh, it does say, yes, you can, can. You can't see it, but it says, yes, you can, can, all right? Well, y'all, that's going to do it. If you haven't done so, give the video a thumbs up. Go over and subscribe to Lead Farmer 73 if you are not already subscribed to that channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos that we upload to our channel. Thank you all again so much for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. And I'm going to see y'all in the next video. I got to get back to these jalapeno poppers. <laughs>